Good morning. March 21st, Lesson 3, Physical Holiness. This is the fifth Sunday in Lent. The focal passage is 1 Corinthians 6, 12 through 20. The purpose statement is to recognize that living a holy life includes spiritual and physical commitment. The key verse, oh, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Don't you know that you have the Holy Spirit from God and you don't belong to yourselves? 1 Corinthians 6 through 19. And with that, We'll listen to the rest of the Bible passages. Thank you. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. You say, food for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. I'd like to start this Bible study lesson with a request to lift up in prayer Bill Lott, who's a friend of Doug and Judy Hall. Uh, Bill apparently uh, has been suffering from a debilitating condition that's paralyzed his arms and legs. Please lift him up in your prayer. Thank you. So in today's lesson, we'll see that God's call to live a holy life includes not only a spiritual commitment, but a physical commitment as well. We live in a world with lots of distractions. A variety of voices call out for our attention. As we shift through the advertisement, maneuver our way through the social media and listen to viewpoints of the secular world, we may find that unwanted ingredients or influences are drawing us away from living a holy life. How can we remain faithful? So let's go back to the beginning. When distractions break out and we feel we're losing our way, it can be helpful to go back to the beginning. In our Christian life, this means going back to the creation story and remembering our special relationship with God. Only humankind is created in God's own image. Genesis 1.27 it also means going back to the beginning of, beginning of God's relationship with the chosen people. God said, you must be holy because I, the Lord, your God, am holy. Leviticus 19.2 Jesus looked back to the law of Moses when he identified the two greatest commandments. First, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your being, and all your strength. Second, you must love your neighbor as yourself. 
when we go back to the beginning, we remember that we're bearers of God's divine image in the world. We remember that we're called to live holy lives in relationship with God, who is holy. We remember that we're called to love. This call to love, this call to holiness, is all-inclusive and spiritual and physical. Our bodies are holy, created by God. The Holy Spirit resides within us. Our actions and our relationships with other people reflect God's presence in our lives. So with that in mind, think about this. When have you been distracted and drifted away from a life of holiness? How does going back to the beginning of your relationship with God help renew your commitment to living a holy life? Two good questions you should think on. So, let's have a beginning with boundaries. Setting boundaries provides room for creativity and helps prevent us from becoming lost. The Apostle Paul wrote about boundaries. He wrote about it in his letter to the church in Cortha. He wrote, I have the freedom to do anything. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. But freedom without boundaries is not a good thing when it comes to living a holy life. Paul offered two reasons. First, not everything is helpful. And second, I won't be controlled by anything. That was verse 12. Paul was responding to the prevailing Greek and Roman views of his days regarding sexual immorality. Adherents to the pagan religion argue that eating food and having sexual relationships were natural parts of life. Therefore, there was no moral restrictions on eating. There should be no moral restrictions on sexual relationships either. Paul clearly saw a flaw in their thinking. He wrote, food is for the stomach and the stomach is for food. In contrast, the body isn't for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. That was verse 13. Paul held the viewpoint that food and stomach belong to the present age, but the body belonged to the Lord Jesus. The body will be raised as the Lord Jesus' body was raised. That was verse 14. Paul again went back to the beginning, all the way back to the story of creation, and quoted Genesis 2.24. The two will become one flesh. 1 Corinthians 6.16. The practice of prostitution or sleeping around, verse 15, violated the principle of one flesh. Can you imagine what Paul would say to the church today on the issue of sexual immorality? Paul wrote about the sacredness of the human body. Don't you know that your bodies are part of Christ. So honor God with your body. Verse 15 and 20. We are called to engage in activities and practices that honor God and acknowledge the sacred value of each person. Adultery, for example, can destroy a marriage. 
and a child's family life and leave emotional scars that may never completely go away. Paul's instruction in the first century is definitely applied to the 21st century. Avoid sexual immorality. Verse 18. So think about this. What boundaries related to sexual immoralities have you been tempted to cross? So let's talk about Paul's boundaries. Paul's question may stop us in our tracks. Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? 1 Corinthians 6.19 It reminds us that God is always with us. It helps us understand that God's call to a holy life is all-inclusive, spiritual and physical. Paul offered two guidances or boundaries. Paul expressed his first boundary by writing, I have the freedom to do anything, but not everything is helpful. That was verse 12. Then Paul expressed his second boundary. I won't be controlled by anything. Verse 12. Paul declared that he would not be controlled by the immoral desires of the flesh or immoral values of the surrounding culture. He would not give in to any temptations that would bring dishonor to the body and God. It's an awesome calling to be a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. It's a great gift to know that God is so close to us that God's presence is always within us. So ponder this for a minute. How is Paul's statement, I have the freedom to do anything, but not everything is helpful? And how do you resist being controlled by distractions and influences that are against the will of God? There is an off switch on your computer, your phone, your tablet, and you don't have to answer everything on Facebook or Twitter without thinking. So let's talk about a dwelling place. In his letter to the church in Corinth, Paul reminded his readers that their bodies were dwelling places of the Holy Spirit. He admonished them to avoid sexual immorality, for this brings harm to the physical body and to the church as the body of believers. So as you explore the spiritual practice of fasting, think about how fasting is a physical practice and a spiritual practice. Reflect on what it means for you to live a holy life physically and spiritually. And the last thought before we pray. What does it mean for you to be a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit? Wow. Humbling thought. Now let us pray. Holy and loving God, Help us always to remember that your Holy Spirit dwells within us. Let everything about the way we live, in, live our lives reflect your love living in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And with that, may you all have a blessed week. Thank you.